So thank you for coming. I'm so excited to see you, and I missed and I missed you a lot. So I'm gonna do my I'm gonna do my presentation about something called cinema and changes. But before we talk, um, I have a specific scene to show you. You ready? Um. Okay. Wait. Okay. Here it is. Okay, this was a movie, this is from a movie called Zero Motivation. It's a 2014 uh, drama comedy film by Talia Levy. And Duffy in the scene, you see, is very sad. So I have a, I have a specific survey for you. So why do, why do you think she's sad? Wait, I'm going to put it on. Do you see the survey, everyone? Do, do like this with your hand, yes. Yeah, OK. Okay, so whoever voted on she would prefer to serve in Tel Aviv, you've probably seen the film and you're right. Duffy in this film is obsessed with serving her military service in Tel Aviv. And I thought it was, it's a pretty, it's a pretty funny scene that really represents Israeli dark humor. And it's one of the most successful films of all time. Zero motivation. Wait. Yeah, slight technical issue. Okay, so a brief, um, a brief about what Israeli films nowadays are usually about. So you can see four themes that that represent specific specific conflicts that Israeli movies in the last thirty years or so are focusing on. So it's Jews and Arabs, Mizrahim, Sephardic Jews, and Ashkenazi Jews, war and peace, and gender, women, men and women. Basically, Israeli cinema nowadays and, and also from, from earlier films love to focus about the other. Not usually the mainstream Jewish person, but the not mainstream Jewish person or the Arab person or the, or, or the, or the ultra Orthodox and the conflicts between them. But it didn't start that way. The first movie that we can actually see it uh, about that, about that specific, uh, those specific subjects, is a movie called Salah Shabbat. Now, I want to, sh I want to show you a specific scene from it. It's a 1964 film, so it's very old, but it's very short. Okay. Four. Wait. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. Excuse me. Kenal Abu. Oh, thank you. So as you've seen, Salah Shabbati, it's a very old film, is about Salah. Salah is um, Jewish Moroccan from a lot, like a lot of immigrants from North Africa and the Middle East. And it's also a pun. Salah Shabbati is his name, but it's also a pun about Sorry that I came, Slicha Shabati, and its use of words. And this movie is very special because 
before that film, there, there weren't a lot of Israeli big films. There was something called agency films. By the way, the Jewish agency, the same one that sent it me, used to produce films, short, very short ones, that their whole purpose is to, to make people do aliyah. Basically, they would show the views of Israel or the workforce and everything they can do to make more people of Europe and the US do aliyah to Israel. And really, Salah Shabbati is the first big Israeli uh, that has a storyline film. And it's also our first Oscars nominee. So back then, you see, movies were a little bit different. They had like four themes. Immigrant stories, love, youth films, and, Jew and uh, Zionistic heroism. Which means there were a lot of war films, but not the kind you, you know. It's very Hollywoodic and kind of movies that would show her very hero heroic scenes of soldiers from, um, from past Israel wars. I want to show you a different types of film, though. This one is called a Burekas film. And it's slightly different, but it's from, from an era during the 60s and, and uh, until the 80s. This one specifically is from 1971, I think. And it's called Chagigaba Snooker, Party in the Pool Table. Oh, by the way, there's no subtitles, um, but you'll see the the... What they're talking is very un unimportant, okay? Wait. Okay, I won't show you more, but that's the scene. You'll see it's a very, it's a very specific type of uh, Israeli humor. And this thing is called Borekas film. Have you ever eaten Borekas before? Mm -hmm. raise, raise your hand if you did. You like it? Yes. So if you didn't know, Borekas is a food. It's a Sephardic type of food, but it's also a film genre. It's from, it used to be from the 60s to the mid 80s. And it has some of the most famous and most successful Israeli films of all time. What's special in it is usually they tell a, a Sephardic Jewish person story as the hero. He usually he, he, he deals, he or she deals with a, an Ashkenazi person, a European Jew. And it's love stories, it's, it's usually comedy. And these films uh, are known to be very, very un unliked by critics. They were killed by critics, but they were very successful for the people. The name Borekas used to be an insulting nickname. Borekas is a Sephardic Jewish dish, and usually bec because th these movies present Sephardic people as their heroes, the critics used to, sh used to, used, used to call them um, Borekas films as an, ins as, as an insult, basically, to low-quality films. And although they weren't uh, critically loved, they were massively popular, and that became that 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 that's what makes them part of uh, Israeli fol folklore. So I have a small question for you, if you can answer it: Is how do you think he did it in the in the in the in the scene? How do you think he ate the egg? Okay, wait. Pulling two. Let's see who gets it. Okay. 
Okay, everyone answered? Okay, so once again, the majority of you, of you were right. It's, it's a real egg. Like there's no, it was, it's nothing really special in it. It's just an egg. And that's how it was done these days. Um, but good job. Wait, but Yuval, wasn't it a hard boiled egg? Um, yes. Yeah, Wait, so I, that's I, not a raw I, egg. Right. Okay. It's so still you not a thing. Yes. Because <laughs> we didn't say that because it wasn't raw. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it's just trying to make sure we're all paying attention. Right, right. So my next question, and this one's the main theme of, of this presentation, is I want to show you examples of how I think Israeli cinema moments that change something in the society. And it's a question because I'm asking you if you think um, Israeli cinema changed something in the society or did it only portray changes? And I want to show you a few examples of it. So, so the first example is from a scene called, is a scene from a movie called Casablan. Now this movie is from 1973, but it's not a Boreka's film. This one's actually a musical. Okay? Okay. <laughs> 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 Okay, did you like this song? It's like an old flash mob. Yeah. <laughs> Very funny. I actually, there was an English translation of this show, and I did it when I was at camp when I was 14 years old. <laughs> oh, I heard about it. Right? The, the, it's, it's like the whole thing in English, right? Ken. <laughs> uh, nice. So the movie you've just seen is called Casablan. And it tells the story also of Kaza, a Jewish Moroccan immigrant um, that falls in love with Rachel, a Polish Jewish person, a po Polish Jewish girl. Her parents really oppose it. And it's the story of how he deals with everyone in the neighborhood. And it's a really big satire about the government, about the establishment, and everything that it, re it, it represents. Now, what's special about this one is it came out in 1973, which is four years before something very big happened in Israel. It's called Mahapach, means, meaning in, Eng in English, the shift. And in the Mahapach, in the shift in 1977, what happened is the Likud par party, headed by uh, Begin, was first elected. And the Likud party that a lot of Jewish immigrants from the Middle East voted for was elected for the first time for the, for the government in the history of Israel. It never happened before. And this, this film from 1973 was, was happening only four years before something that big happened to the immigrants, which, that, what, which is why I think it's very special in that kind. I wanna show you another example of a film that I think changed something. This one is called Bufour, Bufour, and it came out in 2006. It's much more recent. And I wanna show you a specific scene from it. 
ארז, לא פה. הלכת לאיבוד? לאן הגעתי? רחוק. הכי רחוק. לפה מגיעים רק בטעות. מה איתכם? הגעתם לפה בטעות או שרציתם? אני רציתי להגיע לפה. זאת הטעות. הבנת? דבר לכם. מעניין פה? מה אתם עושים כל היום? שומרים על ההר. שלא יברח. נראה נעימה. You can open your mic. Has anyone seen this movie before? Yeah? Oh, Alonso, I see. No. <laughs> no. And anyone, anyone want, want to say how he feels about this scene? Or how they feel about this scene? So basically, um, this is a movie from 2006, like I said. And it happens... Six year, it, it's produced six, year, six years after something called Operation Imrod. Operation Imrod is the operation that brings back soldiers from Lebanon and after the Lebanon War. And this film is super special. Even though it's recent, it's recent. It's one of the first times, probably the first time that Israeli war wasn't, an, wasn't a consensus and was criticized by many. And this film, very different from the heroic war films of the 50s and 60s, represented for the first time soldiers that were suffering and actually was, was criticized of a war. And I think it's very special back because of that. Also, you, brought, these... you said, I wanted to say when you asked how we feel about the scene, it's very like for me to see the scene and to see that he said, I wanted to be there, but, but it was a mistake. I did a mistake by wanting to be there. It's, something, it's a very tough sentence um, to say. It's like I had a dream of doing something meaningful in the army, and now my dream is sort of, um, you know, I understand that it's, not, that it's not what I thought it would be, and it's a really tough thing to see. And to think, you know, this movie, 2006, it came out exactly after the Second Lebanon War. It was very, very famous. A lot of Israeli teens saw it. The, act, the, actress, the actors that we see, are superstars in Israel, um, and it's a, it's a complicated message, uh, especially to people right. who are going to go to the army. So it's very interesting. But I was. Thank you. It pinches your heart. So the last, um, the last scene, the, it's not really a scene, it's more of a trailer. This one the, is the last movie I'm going to show you from uh, this series. This one is the, and it's also the most recent one. It's called Get, The Trial of Vivian and Salem. And we're going to see, watch a trailer of it. Smile, what's up? What's up? He's asking for a gift. What's up? He's not a gift. He's not a gift. I'm not a gift. I'm not a gift. I'm not a gift. אתה יודע, אתה שאין ביכולתנו לכפות דבר על הבעל בשלב זה. בית דין בעולם שיכול לחייב אישה זו לחיות עם גבר זה. איש טוב ובעל טוב גם כן. הוא שונא אותי. האישה הזאת לא רוצה אותך. אז הם לא מתאימים אחד לשני. בעל למופת. הוא מתעלם ממני ומהצרכים שלי כל החיים. כי דווקא שור יש לו יותר שמחה ממנה. תלבי, למה אתם מתקרים אותי? מספיק. האם דעתך נחה עליך אם תיתן לאישה זו גאה? לא, כבוד הרב. trailers these days show like the whole movie I don't I don't even need to watch the movie I, I already saw it now so this movie came out in 2016 and it's the story of a divorce trial 
of Vivian of Salem in the Orthodox community. If you don't know, um, marriage in Israel is handled by the rabbinical institution. Only they can decide who can get divorced, who can get married, and you can do it only through them. And this specific movie criticizes a lot of how it's done by showing the story of Vivian of Salem and her divorce. Wait, anyone say something? Okay. So basically, for the last two or three years, the, uh, the story of state and church in Israel and the separation of the rabbinical institution is one of the hottest po political debates of our time. It's a slogan, it's an election slogan by many parties and it's talked by by many. But this film came out four years ago and it may have did something before to do, to do this kind of big discussion. And I think it's very interesting by that. I and think moving up. So yeah. I want to add one, one more thing. I think um, also the fact that it shows the way of life or a perspective of the ultra-Orthodox um, population. I'm sure you all heard about the Unorthodox, which is a, a very popular show on, right. on Netflix right now. It, it makes people want to see it because it's a population that we are as Israelis are so distant from and we know nothing about. So it shows their way of life. And sometimes, you know, unfortunately, even create more, more gaps. It's more difficult for us to um, connect or to identify with a lot of the things that we see um, in, this, in those movies. Thank you. So this was the, my last example, and I wanted to ask you, it's, it's better if it's an Israeli film, but you can write your favorite film of them all using, go to, go, go up to more and you can use annotate. Okay, if you see the icon of annotate, it's like a pencil. And then you can choose to do text, for example. Then I write. Uh, everyone sees what I wrote? Oh, nice. No Titanic, man. Frozen 2, great selection. People of culture. I know, I know who wrote this one, The Princess Bride. Sonia and Lori, I look, I'm looking at you. And Rick and Micah. Okay, great. Every, everyone wrote their favorite film? Do like this. Back to the Future. Oh. I like your films. You have a great selection. <laughs> okay, thank you. If you didn't write, you can tell it in the in the next um, in the next next frames. Wait. So, movies and me. Um, I wanted to tell you about the first movie I ever remember watching, the first Israeli movie I ever remember watching, is Alex Cholava. It, it means Alex is lovesick, and it's a love story, or a sort of a love story, to an, a young boy and an older woman. Um, and it's a Borekas film. It's a very silly, and we have, it's a very silly film, and we have a tape of it in our house using like videotapes. I think I watched it way too many times when I was a kid and it's still, I still remember it as like my first Israeli film and the film that really puts me in this scene of Israeli films. My actually favorite film is called, if you've ever seen it, it's called Late Summer Blues. 
or Blues Lachofesh Agadol in Hebrew. If you didn't see it, you have to see it because it's amazing. And it tells a story about a group of a group of teens after high school, before their army service, and their love stories, how they feel about it, and it's done beautifully. And that's why I like it so much. I also went to a few uh, uh, film festivals in Israel. But, it, but after that, I wanted to, um, I wanted to tell you that I, I really enjoyed doing this. And I wanted, I wanted to summarize this. So, Lesikum, during, during times of change in the Israeli, his, in the Israeli history and society, movies were totally there to portray it. They didn't just stand aside. And movies may have changed the perception of, of many, many groups and ethnic groups, Orthodox people, Sephardic people, by the Israelis, uh, in the Israeli society through, through cinema. But last thing, Israeliness, according to films, is something very diverse. It, there's, no, there's no one kind of Israeli. Not, not any, but basically films portray all the kinds of Israeliness there is. And if, I really enjoy doing this. So if, if you have any more questions, you can open your mic and ask a question. Again, see. Yuval? Yes. It's Rebecca. So oh, I... as far as, hi. So, um, we've been watching a lot of um, kind of series TV that is either originated from Israeli TV or is in Hebrew, like Fauda and um, Shtisel. Um, do you have any that are favorites of yours that are not on like Netflix or something that's in Israeli series that you oh, think to is particularly totally, good? Totally, totally. Um, I, I have two specific ones that I really like. I didn't find them on streaming services, but I can look on them on, um, on Israeli TV and see where they, where, where they exist. One is called Ha'chayot uh, It's a com it's a comic drama. It's called My My Successful St okay. Sisters. Yeah, and it's beautifully made, really. Mm -hmm. And the second one is 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 really award winning. It's called Al Haspectum on the Spectrum. It tells the story of uh, of autistic people in Israeli mm -hmm. society, and it's also really beautifully done. And you should really watch it. Great. Thank you. Yuval? Yes. It's, yes. it's Lori. So um, you may have said this before, but I was also making my lunch. So, uh, <laughs> but did you explain how did you get such a love of Israeli film? I mean, you probably shared with us a little bit, but maybe say more about how you got so into this from an analysis perspective. And, you know, you bring your sort of smarts to these different topics, but this is something that's a passion for you. How did that get started? Oh, thank you. Um, I think that I really loved films from early on and specifically American films, but also um, like they, uh, my brothers presented me to French cinema and all sorts of cinema. Um, I learned how to do photography when I was uh, ninth grade. And through this course, they talked a lot about um, how to interpret films in all, in all sorts of ways. So I really, I really got into films uh, through, through photography, but even before that, my brothers presented me to a lot of films. What's your favorite American film? Um, it's a movie from Wes, uh, from Wes Anderson as a director. It's called Moonrise Kingdom. And I, want, I have a poster of it. Wait, I, I have a mess in my room, but I, I'm going to show you. I know it well. <laughs> okay, you see? Yeah, it's a great movie. So Wes Anderson is my favorite American director. I think yeah. this movie is amazing. Great. Did you see Jojo Rabbit? I did. I did. It was incredible. Yes. And, and what about, Yuval, what about the genre of sort of Holocaust films and the impact that had on Israeli society, whether they were Israeli made or foreign made? I think uh, there's a specific film that I have in mind um, that tells something about, that tells them something, so, something in that kind of story. It's called the Garden Ever of the... Walking on Water. Have you ever heard about it? Not that one. So it's basically a Mossad agent. It's a drama film, but a Mossad agent is sent to kill um, a Nazi person, but he, but he has to meet with his, um, with his grandson. 
And there's kind of a love story between the Mossad agent and the grandson of the, of the grandpa. And through their love stories, you, their love story, you can really see like the different, uh, uh, the different types of, of, of perspectives going through, um, going through Israelis and, and the Holocaust and Nazis. Mm. And I think you should, you should really watch it if, if you're interested in that kind of, in that kind of viewpoint. But yeah. Wait, what's the name again? Walking on, Walking on water. Okay. I think what's also um, interesting about Holocaust movies is that even with Israeli movies, if it's, even if it's not specifically movies about the Holocaust, so many Israeli movies um, that were made a lot of years show the perspective of the second generation. So even if they don't, don't discuss the Holocaust, they show the son and, and daughters of the survivors and they go in deep into their homes and what kind of things are happening in a home of people who experience the Holocaust um, and how their personality changes. And it's just there in the background, even if it's not necessarily the, the theme of the, of the movie, but it's, it has an essential part, definitely. Yuval, thank Thank you. It was very brave using the technology and thank you for sharing with us your story. Thank you, Yuval. Thank you, Yuval. Thank you, everyone, for joining. It's so nice to see you.